This is News at 6. Not yet an announcement. I got an announcement. I just did it. Your big story at 6, firing back at Nike with fire. The shoe company's decision to feature quarterback Colin Kaepernick in a new ad campaign has some former customers setting their Nike apparel on fire. Thanks for watching ABC7. I'm Jeff Butera. I'm Krista Fogelsong. Kaepernick has become the face of the NFL protest of racial injustice by kneeling during the national anthem. He says it cost him his job. Yeah, the 49ers let him go and he never got picked up. Nike's ad says believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Not everyone is happy with that. Here in Southwest Florida, Cape Coral City Councilman David Stokes tweeted, he's boycotting Nike. On social media, he says, I'm pretty sure Nike executives have never attended a police officer's funeral and witnessed a crying wife and children. The flip side of that, one Southwest Florida resident wrote back, try attending the funerals of the innocent black men and women some police officers have killed. Maybe then you'll have a change of heart. Here's how we're getting you more tonight. ABC 7's Ross Mate reports on whether Nike is taking as big a risk as it seems. Ross. Yeah, guys, I talked to a Fort Myers marketing expert today who tells me the Just Do It campaign is not just one of the most successful sports slogans of the past 30 years, but in all of business. And while he doesn't agree with the way that Kaepernick protested racial injustice during the anthem, he says his sacrifice makes him a great candidate for this campaign. Sorry, Nike. I've been buying you for the past 20 plus years. Not anymore. Tonight, thousands of people are protesting Nike by burning apparel or boycotting the company online. I don't know why companies get into political stuff. It just should be avoided. Christopher Spiro, who owns Fort Myers-based marketing agency Spiro Associates, says the boycott is a bad sign for Nike. All, any publicity is not good publicity, so that's a misnomer. But he believes Kaepernick actually represents the brand well. He sacrificed, jeopardized his career for his personal positioning on it. And in the 30th anniversary of the Just Do It line, it epitomized what they mean when they say, just do it, give it your all, give it 100%. Even though Nike stocks have taken a tumble, he believes the buzz created by Kaepernick will help the billion dollar company keep thriving. Of it while the stock is down, the brand awareness is increasing. People are going to pay attention to the Nike brand right now to say, ooh, what are they going to do next? But some say they won't wait around to find out. This military vet happened to be wearing a pair of Nikes while walking downtown, but says he won't be for long. I'm disappointed. I, I don't think it's the right thing to do. And uh, I don't think I'll buy any more Nike products. Now, coming up tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, we will get you more on just how much Nike stocks have fallen and why one Fort Myers shoe store believes this Colin Kaepernick ad will actually help their sales. Live in the studio, Ross DiMatte, ABC 7. Nike has had a relationship with Kaepernick since 2011 and kept it even when he couldn't get signed with an NFL team. And using him in the new campaign is no accident. Consulting firm Edelman says half of all buyers now turn to brands that express beliefs similar to their own. Nike is planning on releasing a line of merchandise with shoes and t-shirts in conjunction with the ad, and it will donate to Kaepernick's Know Your Rights nonprofit. The big question is why do you think Nike did uh, choose to use Colin Kaepernick as the, uh, the spokesperson, the face, if you will, of their biggest campaign in 30 years? A company like Nike encourages those to put everything that they have into everything that they do. Colin Kaepernick put it all on the line. He sacrificed, jeopardized his career for his personal positioning on it. And in the 30th anniversary of the Just Do It line, it epitomized what they mean when they say, just do it, give it your all, give it 100%. Now, I don't necessarily agree in the fashion he went about doing it, but I appreciate his imagery and his likeness standing for willing to put everything on the line for something that he personally believes in. Where I believe it crosses a line is an NFL team is not a publicly held, publicly traded company. It is a privately held company. And if one of my staff member, members elected to nationally slash internationally protest something like that without my at least being made aware of it, I would have issues with it as well. Mm. That, and that's an interesting point. I, I, 
one thing I find interesting is that we've seen thousands of people now tweeting using the hashtag, um, you know, protest Nike, mm -hmm. or, it, you know, they, they're saying they're not going to buy Nike anymore. Burning, Burning shoes, ripping sweatbands in half, yep. And this is kind of par for the course. I mean, we've seen this happen before, but I'm just curious about it. When Nike makes this decision, I mean, I'm assuming a billion dollar co uh, company like Nike is going to know what the fallout is going to be. What's their thought process there? Do they just think that the, um, the as we've heard you know, before, any publicity is good publicity. Do you think that that applies to this case? First of all, any publicity is not good publicity, so that's a misnomer. Uh, and I can cite you multiple examples of that. But in this particular instance, I think that they anticipated a certain level of backlash, but when your stock is down about 2% as of lunch today, the stock is down about 2%. Um, and there's a mixed bag. There are celebrities and athletes and Joe Lunchpail that are just denouncing Nike as a brand, burning shoes, ripping wristbands and headbands. And then there is a whole collection of athletes and business people and uh, individuals that are supporting uh, them for putting it out there because he did put it all online. It is part of the controversy, but here's the other side of it. It was one of the lead stories on national news this morning. You're here interviewing me because it's a newsworthy story. So on the, uh, the good and the bad aspect of it, while the stock is down, the brand awareness is increasing. People are going to pay attention to the Nike brand right now to say, ooh, what are they gonna do next? I liken it to Howard Stern. Uh, you know, when, when, when Howard Stern came out and, uh, and he was going national, uh, you know, they saw definite market increases for fans that were listening and supported him. They also saw definite market increases for those that were listening because they didn't like him. Regardless, everybody was listening and he built that brand same way. We also are in a society where people have short memories. Um, Tiger Woods. You know, the Tiger Woods brand, he had sponsors dropping him and people were running from him as fast and as hard as he can. But yet, in a golf tournament, the guy might be ranked 12th and there's 200% more spectators following the 12th ranked golfer versus the number one golfer. You know, so it, it is, it, it, it goes to that brand. I, I, I watched national news this morning where they also discussed for about three and a half minutes Roger Federer losing yesterday because the news anchor on the Today Show very much supported the Federer brand and was a big fan of Federer. And again, it's that same, it's that same type of thing. And, and just going off of that, I mean, I'm wondering how risky this strategy is for Nike. Like, can you just kind of forecast how you see this playing out? Do you think that this will be um, a net gain in the end for Nike to, to attach their, um, you know, Colin Kaepernick to uh, their Just Do It campaign? I'm not sitting in their boardroom with them. I'm not part of the agency that's pitching them. So it's hard for me to, uh, to try and uh, give you some type of prognosis as to how I feel the campaign will go. Um, what I see is you're going to have... Uh, the initial groundswell, which is today, I think you're going to have your secondary groundswell with NFL kicking off this week. If you think that that's a coincidence that they launched, that, that he tweeted out on this campaign, NFL, NFL starts on Thursday. If you think it's a coincidence, it's not. He, uh, you know, waited for college football to be done. College football is now done. This comes out right on the heels of NFL launching on Thursday night. Uh, it's it's not it's not it's part of it. The fallout on it, I, I I think you will see a slow push. My 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 opinion is you'll see a slow push to push away from it because I think the backlash is such. So while it starts out up here, I think you're going to start to see it dip down further and further, and it will be one of those hallmark and history type moments, unless unless. The concept is to find more controversial athletes that put it all on the line and start building that as a sense of campaign. So when I tell you I'm not sure what Nike's plans are, that's what I mean on that. Are they hitching their wagon to one star? Well, they're Nike. They're smarter than that. I don't think so. 
Are they going to go down in the celebration of the 30th anniversary? They're kicking off with Kaepernick because he's the most controversial. And then they're going to go to the rest that have put it all on the line to get where they want to be. Uh, that could be. I, again, I'm not their agency, though I wish I was, and if they're hiring, I, I'd welcome the opportunity. Um, but, you know, you, you, you take a look at people that have put it all on the line. You know, you, you take a look at people that have gone to the nth degree for what they believe in, whether it be their writing, their music, uh, their athletic ability. Uh, they put it all on the line. This business is my representation of just do it. I put it all on the line. In the downturn of the economy, everything my wife and I had was put into this business and put all on the line uh, because we believed in it. He believed in the social injustice as it related to the topic and he was willing to step away from and, and, and risk millions of dollars playing the sport he loves. And yeah, he was having it. He, he, he got blackballed, uh, my opinion. He got blackballed, and no team wanted to pick up that cur controversial person. Tim Tebow, huge Gator, huge Gator fan. Tim Tebow, same type of thing. No one wanted, when, when he became a New York Jet, Bill Parcell says, I don't want that circus in my training camp because there was a circus that came associated with it that took away from the core business. Uh, 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 being the Jets uh, and not just Tim Tebow who utilizing the same symbol taking a knee to thank God for the God given athletic ability and putting him on that field Colin Kaepernick has taken the same path of taking a knee to be against so it's it, it's, it's very interesting um, in, in both instances I still come back to this it's a private business. That is where this gets very tricky. It's a public figure who is paid by a private business. And did it hurt the 49ers stock? Did their merchandising go down? Was he a liability because of that? Is no other team picking him up for fear that they're gonna buy his number jerseys and burn it at a parking lot before the game? Those conversations are taking place by anybody. Guy's a hell of an athlete. Hell of an athlete. Picked him in a fantasy team when he was still playing. Hell of an athlete. But do you want that brand associated with yours?